All right, so in the last video, you guys heard about how I have this thing deployed out, but it turns out getting this stuff deployed out behind Cloudflare is a little bit problematic because Cloudflare has a 100 megabyte limit on file sizes. So when I log in as an admin to my project and I want to upload a new video, it turns out that I was getting exceptions because some of my videos are like 300 megabytes, some of them are 700 megabytes, and I had to restructure the code a little bit to actually upload the video in, in chunks. Okay, so I basically take a video and I chunk it and then I upload that. So I'm gonna kind of demo that and I'll walk you through how that actually works and I'll show you the code in case you want to do something similar. You may have to apply this paradigm um, or honestly just use S3, upload to S3. It's probably a better approach anyway, but I wanted to get everything to run out of EPS just because. Now let me go ahead and show you this. I'm gonna click on create content and you can watch down here, it's gonna do 50 megabytes at a time, right? So I went ahead and just chunked them up into 50 megabytes and you'll see it go through and make new requests to upload these video chunks to the remote VPS, okay? So it finished the first one and then it's gonna keep going through. And so while it's doing that, let me kind of talk about how this is working because we have all this stuff running on the VPS inside of a Docker container, but I wanna, I wanna walk you through what's going on. I want you guys to understand how this is kind of working. Okay, so I have my Tanstack server over here. And when a user wants to upload a large file, so I'll just go ahead and say me, because I'm the admin. When we upload a large file, what's happening is I'll select that file, which I think is like 1.1 gigabyte. And I go ahead and I chunk it up. Okay, so this is the file, like 1.1 gigabyte. And I chunk it up into little segments. So this is a 50 megabyte segment and then another 50 megabyte segment and then another one. And I basically treat these as separate files. Okay, so if this is like my video mp4, so what I end up doing is I upload my video segment one, right? Which would represent this, this one over here. And then that's going to basically go over from my browser and it's gonna to go to the server and that gets stored on a volume mount. So I am using a volume mount. So I'll say volume mount. Uh, I'll just say slash files is like the location. And that is going to store that little chunk inside of my server somewhere. I guess I should have this inside the server. So it stores that chunk and then it moves on to the next one. So eventually I'm going to get a bunch of different chunks stored onto this machine, which in this case, that's probably going to be like 20 different chunks. So this is probably still going. My, my upload speed's pretty slow, so it has to kind of go through all these. But once it's done doing all those chunks, I then have code that goes through all of them and just basically concatenates them all together. So it's just like a giant buffer or byte array, concatenates them all together into one giant file, and then it deletes the other ones. So like eventually it'll delete all these, uh, and then my file will be uploaded, and then when a user wants to watch the video, that is what's gonna get streamed down to their machine. So while my video is still uploading, it might take a while, let's look at the main pieces of how this works. So I'm gonna open up the ad page, and when a user submits the file, I go ahead and I call this method called upload video chunk, and I pass it the full video. So this would be like the 1.1 gigabyte file, and I generate a unique ID to send over that video. And so if we look at this file, again, what I'm doing is I create a chunk size by 50 megabytes, and then I figure out how many chunks I'm gonna need, and then I loop over them one by one. I create a new form. I you know, get the chunk index, which would be basically the index of the for loop. I figure out how many total chunks there are in this video, and then I send over the chunk. So I make a new file, You know, I take the chunk information, which is the full file sliced out from start to end, and then I upload that individual chunk. So let's look at this. So this is a server function in Tanstack. And again, I get that chunk index, I get the total chunks, I get the video key, make sure everything's kind of set up properly. And this is just some like checks. And if you find a security vulnerability, let me know, I'll fix it. So eventually what I do is I get that chunk that came in, I convert it to an array buffer so I can get the whole buffer and I save it to disk, right? So here I get the video key dot part of the chunk index. So this would be part zero, part one, part two, et cetera. And then I check if we are at the very last index, then we just basically concatenate those all into an array and then we save them to a file. Now, granted at some point, if the file's too large, this will probably just eat up all the memory on the service and probably crash my server. Um, but again, the only person who can upload the videos are me. 
And I don't think I have a single video that's over a certain size that would probably cause the server to crash. And then after we concatenate that file and we save it, we go ahead and just delete all the chunks. There are some edge cases, some error handling that I should probably take care of. I just haven't done yet. So for example, what happens if this fails? And then we have a bunch of random chunks just eating up the volume on my, my device, right? So there are things that we should probably do to be more graceful if an error happens, if these chunks haven't been processed and concatenated and cleaned up. But uh, again, this is just for like a little side project, right? So that's how the chunking kind of works. Again, probably just upload to an S3 bucket. It's probably going to be a lot better for you to do that instead of doing this yourself. Um, but sometimes it's fun just to do it yourself, right? But uh, let's also look at how the video is streamed down to a user. So I have an API endpoint over here. So if I go to, where is that? Routes, API, I go to segments, video. Let's look at how the video is streamed down because when I load the page to watch the video, it's not sending the full video, which could be very large. It's just sending a little segment. And as you watch through it, it sends over a little bit more. So built into the browser, I'm gonna skip all this like pre-setup. Um, there's certain checks to make sure you're a premium user and you have access to the premium segment. But the way this works is I basically get a range. So like when you're using the built-in video player on the browser, it can send in a range of bytes. And if that range is defined, we basically want to stream in that file and only get a certain subset of the bytes of that file and stream them back to the user, right? So we basically, if you look here, we get the starting point of the file, we get the ending point, we figure out you know the full chunk size, and then we create a read stream using the start and the end. We get the file, we kind of get some, you know, some header set up, and then we send that back to the user so they can actually start watching through that file. If there is no range set, then we just go ahead and send over the information of the file. So if there is no range header, we basically create a stream of the file itself, and then we stream that down. So again, we're using streams because you don't want to like eat up all the memory on your, your machine. You don't want to load in the full file to memory and then like send it over in one chunk. You want to stream over the file to the user. So that's why we're doing a git file that returns a video read stream. This is something you have to do to convert the node stream to like what Tanstack needs, which is a web stream, I guess. Okay, so now the video is done uploading and we can watch through it where we can mute it so you guys don't hear my, me talking twice. And just to kind of show you, if I go back over here, um, it should at some point, if I were to kind of fast forward, you'll see that it makes another request and in the request headers, which are down here. Yeah, so it's gonna go ahead and put that range. So notice it says bytes. This is like where it's starting at, I believe. And then that's where the back end starts, you know, streaming the file and getting a segment and starting sending that over to the front end. But yeah, I guess it's been pretty fun trying to build up my own little course platform. Um, if you guys wanna check out this code, it's in a GitHub repo, I'll put it in the description below. You can kind of read through it. Uh, let me know if there's something I need to change. But uh, overall, yeah, it's been a, f a fun little learning experience. Before I wrap up the video, just remember I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you wanna find a place to kind of hang out or talk to other developers or just send me a message or ask for help. The Discord's in the link below. I'll be happy to hear if you guys join, so definitely do that. And other than that, I guess have a good day. Happy coding.